Hi, this is Dr. Jeff, the Rocky Mountain Vet. I'm down here in Guadalajara to kick off uh, this bay neuter mobile. I graduated from CSU in 1989 and I've been practicing veterinary medicine for the last 35 years and I'm known for high volume spay neuter. I, let's say I graduated from Colorado State University in 1989 and the bottom line is I worked animal control and that really made me see the, the bad side of things, how people treated animals uh, that were not taking the veterinarians and it really wanted me to help reduce overpopulation problems and that's the biggest single threat to dogs and cats across the world, not just America, not just Mexico, but across the world. And it's just being born, too many, uh, overpopulation. So it, that's what really drove me more than anything else. I don't think I have a most memorable case. I, I, I spayed a jaguar in Mexico and I thought that was one of the coolest things I've ever done. Uh, but I've worked on animals all around the world. I've been to India four or five times. Uh, I've worked in 46 countries now. Um, I really like heart surgeries. I like lung surgery. So anything on the chest when you're in there and you got a beating heart, to me that's just amazing. So I get really excited over those kind of surgeries. Don't do a lot of them, but we do them kind of, you know, a few every year. Uh, our big emphasis is obviously spay neuter and other uh, surgeries. We do a lot of bone surgeries, but I think in the end, chest surgeries and working with certain exotic animals is uh, really kind of cool. We're number one on Animal Planet for eight seasons, and and the bottom line is. We try to use it as an educational platform to talk to people, uh, to talk about spay neuter, uh, to show basic health care. De uh, dental care is real important, you know, and a lot of animals never get it. Um, I think the show was a two-edged sword. It, at the time, it brought a lot of people to us, but we didn't really need the business. Uh, I've, I've always had a very busy uh, clinic, and the show actually made us busier, which we really couldn't even keep up with, so that was one downside. But I think the positive side was that we used the, the show as an educational platform. The future of veterinary medicine in America scares me to death. Um, Generationally, the kids coming out don't want to work that much. They don't want to work, you know, 40 hours a week. Uh, and it's that life-work balance. And I don't think that spread the rest of the world quite yet. COVID obviously was hard on, on, a, on a, lot of, uh, a lot of businesses. Uh, there's a lot less people available to work. Um, so I, I don't know, you know, it, it's, we have to train vets to do real basic stuff. Um, and it's great to have high-end clinics, it's great to be t doing TPLOs or the heart surgeries, but in the end, most animals need real basic health care. Vaccines, spay, neuter, you know, an abscess here, some antibiotics for something, maybe some flea and tick medication. And I think that's what we don't address very well as a profession. Um, I think in Mexico and a lot of places, you have a much uh, younger demographic in Mexico, and I think you have a lot of vets coming up that really want to do something. And, and if I give advice to anything, anybody, it would be like, if you give back to your community, your community will give back to you. You know, so I, I think if I had a message to be for the future veterinarians, it'd be give back to your community. It's okay to make a living, but it's also okay to give a little back. Well, I'm here at Kotemic University, and I definitely want to invite people to come out, uh, see what they do here. The uh, veterinary students here are highly rated. Uh, they do a great job and these guys do a lot of community outreach. So I think from that standpoint, this is a great university and you ought to come down and check it out.